Hello everybody, my name is Al from CyberLab and today will be another video about NAS, specifically true NAS. And in this video, we're gonna focus to understand if it's worth you to invest in SSD to create a cache in your NAS. Okay, if you have your NAS only based on hard drives and if you add a SSD, you're gonna understand if it will make any difference and if it's make a difference in your application, maybe it's worth for you to invest. So, if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're going to show in this video, but first of all, don't forget to leave a like, consider to subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed, and let's understand a little bit more about it. As I told, in this video we're going to focus to understand if it's worth to install SSD as a cache in your true NAS. So, if you guys come here on my screen, this will be the subject for the video and let's try to understand a little bit more what was the idea. You have two types of cache that you can have. You can have the LR2 ARC that will be considered only for read cache and the second one will be S-Log that synchronize write and read cache. In this way, LR2, you only need one SSD, in our case, we're gonna only try this specific option, but if you have S-Log, two SSDs, both SSDs will work as a mirror, and that they will copy the information initially for the SSD until this field, and that uh, time by time, they will copy from the SSD back to your NAS. Also, they will keep some information, or keep some information there. In this way, when you need to access it, will be fast and will be fast for write as well. But in our case, or my case, I only had one spare SSD, so I could not try the S-Log, only try the LR2 for make only the read cache. So, in other words, in my case, only thing that the NAS will do is try to keep in the SSD files that access more frequently. They will count, I don't know, have an algorithm that will calculate how often you open that file and that will keep a copy in your SSD, but the rest that you don't access so much, they will keep outside for your SSD. And in this way, we're gonna start to do our test. So if I come here, I will tell a little bit more about the system that I have. I didn't use a really powerful CPU, I use a third generation CPU, what have uh, four cores and eight threads. I have 16 gigabytes of RAM memory in this NAS, and also I have uh, four hard drives of six terabyte each, what is running as a RAID 5, or in the case of true NAS, RAID Z1. Also, I had only one SSD, as I told, and that this SSD is for 128 gigabytes. In this NAS, I didn't have any more network card, so I only use this standard for my computer, what it's one gigabyte network card, and in this case, my true NAS was updated for the revision 25.4.1, the latest revision available in the time that I'm recording this video. So let's try to understand a little bit more about the files that I use, because each file will have a different effect of my performance. So first of all, I try to use a big file. I try to use some video that I record that is over 5 GB and that this normally will get a little bit fast speeds. Also, I try to use a lot of small photos and documentations that was available in my computer, what I copy for my NAS, and that I try to copy back to my computer only to see the difference. I use the crystal disk mark only to have an idea for speeds and I try to use SNB, the standard protocol of uh, network to access my data and copy everything. So in this way, we're gonna try to understand the results that I have. This is the result. First thing, I try to get my big file and I copy my NAS, wait a little bit and that I start to, to copy back from my computer Without my cache, I have a average speeds of 110 megabytes per second, and with the cache, I have 112 megabytes per second. With the cache, it took a few seconds less compared for without cache, what, from my point of view, didn't make any difference and didn't make any sense for me to spend a SSD only to win these two megabytes, so I don't indicate in this case. But let's try to see for the small files, and these small files make a lot, a lot of difference. Because without the cache, 
when I was copying, I get average speed of 38 megabytes per second. And then when I use my cache, they speed up for 72, almost double of speed. And this case make a lot of difference for you and make a lot of difference for me, principally if you want to access a lot of words, copy documentations, copy pictures, open the pictures, this will make your usable performance or your expense a little bit better. So let's try to understand what you need to consider. Remember, in my case, I use the LARC that it's only for read cache and that this only gonna speed for read. Will not make any difference for copy or write information because I don't have two SSDs and I don't have a mirror. So the data copy everything for the hard drives and that they will create a copy for the same data in my SSD. Once that access, they will copy or access from the SSD, not for my hard drive. Also, you need to have a lot of run memory. When I was copying my small files, my 16 gigabyte almost maxed out and I didn't see what's the difference. When you copy files, not make so much difference, but small files, run memory make a lot of difference. If you have a lot of people that access your NAS now and then, and they have a lot of files that access there, you're gonna see the difference because this will fill up and that's after this fill up, the speeds will return for hard drive if you want to access a file that is not so often accessed compared for others. Also, if you want to use, let's say, Nextcloud, Plex, or there's application that have databases, will be advantageous to use this log or it means read and write and all the data that they access it more frequently will be saved there. If you want to have a better experience with databases, let's say some application that use it, in this case, the read and write will be the best option, not only the read because they will copy the information, paste the information and move on. And you don't have this option only with the read cache or LR. So let's try to understand if it's really worth. Yes will be worth if you use a lot of small files really frequently. Also will be worth if you have a lot of RAM memory. In my case, 16 gigabytes was enough RAM memory, but if your system only have eight gigabytes, not make so much difference because the bottleneck will be the RAM memory, not uh, the speeds of hard drive or SSD. What case that will not be worth? As I told, if you wanted to use big files, if you wanted to stream, make backup, something that you gonna copy there and not gonna read so often, this will not make any difference at all for you, only you gonna spend money unnecessarily. Also, as I told, if you have only eight gigabytes of run memory and you wanted to use cache as well, your run memory will max out and that the performance or the experience will be basically the same as you don't have anything there. So in other words, let's try to understand all this cache idea. Cache will be worth in a specific case and that you can have improvement. As I told, if you have a read cache, you wanna have a more advanced when you are reading data and more specific for small files. If you have some application that have database, you're only gonna see the difference if you have a read and write cache. So you need to have at least two. Also, if you have a spare SSD, yes, you can install, but if you don't have a spare SSD and you only use big files, don't spend that extra money only to try to speed up your system because not make any difference. And in any case, I suggest you to try to put the cache, take out the cache and see the difference and if you feel any difference. You always can remove the cache right again in your database and that in this way you can confirm that everything will be fast or not before we start to invest in a big SSDs or everything else. So in this way, we arrive at the end of the video. I hope that with this video, you guys understand a bit more if it's worth to put a, a SSD as a cache or not. And in each case will be different. I cannot tell that all the files or any application it's worth or not. So if you guys like this video and think that it was interesting, please don't forget to leave your like, consider subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed yet and see you next time. Bye.